How's it going guys? Welcome back to a brand new Peacemaker episode 5 breakdown recap and review and yet again this was a hilarious Peacemaker episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm honestly really struggling to find anything that I don't like about this show. It just keeps coming out with more and more punches quite literally from a gorilla this episode and there's further developments especially with that ending so I don't want to waste any more time other than to just get right into it but before we do though Having said that, go ahead and like this video. If you do go on to enjoy it, I'd really appreciate that. And if you're enjoying the breakdowns and maybe you're not subscribed here, maybe today you can consider subscribing to stay up to date with every single video just like this. But we more or less picked up right where we left off at the end of last episode, which was a very dark ending considering the context and the flashbacks we got from Peacemaker's childhood. We got heavy, heavy teasers into what happened with his brother, which I do feel like they will expand upon perhaps with those full flashbacks in a couple of episodes time potentially but here we have Peacemaker basically having an egg straight up to get that protein but we also have Eagly looking absolutely adorable acting adorable trying to make Peacemaker feel a little bit better by gathering him some food yet again further emphasis on the brother situation as Peacemaker goes outside to essentially just sit there and just contemplate some things he sees two kids assuming brothers just uh, hanging out with each other once again reminding him of what he's lost once again, love the comedic tones of this show and as I always say on this channel, whether it's Doom Patrol or several other series out there, my favorite flavor that's become apparent to me over the years of watching shows is comedy balanced with, you know, an undertone of really feelsy moments in it as well and that's something that Peacemaker is really managing to do quite well. And speaking of those somewhat more serious undertones to this show, we have Leota with her girlfriend, or was it a wife? I can't really remember, but either way, struggling to kind of maintain, it's not necessarily struggling to maintain a relationship, but it's very evident to her other half that she is starting to feel as though she's choosing the job over her. And Leota, you know, there's gonna be quite a contrast, I think, from the show's beginning to the end, and I think that's all fairly predictable to all of us, in where she started out as, you know, Amanda Waller's daughter and a bit newbie, a bit naive with all of this stuff, not necessarily like her mother, but slowly along the show's direction. I'm not saying she's copy and pasting Amanda Waller at all, but you can see that she's getting a taste for what that life is really like. And I feel like the little messages that have been seeded to Leota throughout the show, even from Harcourt early on, saying that's a risk, you know, when she saw her family that she had someone to care about, she said that's somewhat of a weakness in this line of work. And lo and behold, it does seem to look like for Leota as, as these episodes are going on, that she doesn't really have time to have that work or home life balance. And she could inadvertently turn out to kind of be in a situation Similar to that of her mother where you can't really have anyone uh, when you're doing this line of work. Not to mention the things that you'll be doing will somewhat wear down on your soul. As we see her plant Peacemaker's diary later on on behalf of her mother. And the kind of filth that she feels having done that. But that's the interesting thing about her character again. Lastly, just to kind of put a pin in this, is that she does so well like relating or just being nice to Peacemaker. But once again... It was somewhat of a low-key manipulation because she was inside the apartment kind of bonding with him, but only to plant the diary there. And that just makes you think like, ah, oh, damn, like, you know, damn. But I do believe that she does kind of like them. And in this episode, one of my favorite things is that the team is actually starting to like each other, the 11th Street kids. Even Harcourt with her tough exterior is starting to crack down and kind of low-key like what she's doing even these people she's working with which i don't think she ever 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 considered seeing herself being like towards people like vigilante peacemaker leota john now with everyone back with clemson they have a little powerpoint presentation this scene provided for some of my favorite peacemaker moments stuff that i would love to repeat but uh you know, demonetization on the channel and all of that. Clemson says, and this means I guess butterflies have only been here for around a year. Two people perished in a plane crash, one being a CEO and one a pop singer. And after an autopsy, butterflies were found and that's when they first became aware of them. And since then, a bunch
bunch of high profile politicians to, you know, titans of industry and celebrities have been taken over by butterflies. And actually imagine how dangerous that is. And I know we have a scope from seeing that map of butterflies just all over the globe. But imagine just people like Elon Musk to whoever to whoever presidents potentially having butterflies. Like this is a full force invasion. But again, there is still something more going on here, especially from the tease of Judo Master saying, trust me, like butterflies, they're not. And then it's just like, you know, he died. Well, he got shot. So there is more here, especially when we're taking into account the fact that Clemson is a butterfly as well. We get the little explanations of how they enter through human orifices. There's a butthole joke there, but th these aren't even the best jokes. This is when Peacemaker got angry at John once again. He has a, a very big grudge on him, even though that seems to turn around by the end of this episode with the gorilla, but we'll save that till later. But for now, he's really annoyed at him for putting his dad in prison, and he comes up with a bunch of other names for anyone else he could think of to put in prison since John claimed that he couldn't think of anyone else. And my favorite line was the very last line, I think. Those beeps at Riverdale. Uh, that, that was just... Mwah. Again, I would repeat it, but... This video will be demonetized if I do. But that was uh, absolutely fantastic. And I think the part between John and uh, John Cena, even, if you will, Peacemaker, was quite improvised. I think that is already flowing out there. And I think James Gunn let them spout for 20 minutes just saying random names and whatnot. Which is why that post credit scene at the end of this episode showed extra stuff just being spat out there again and again and again. And of course, apparently, according to Peacemaker... Superman has a fetish for poo. I knew it. I was the first to say this. Nobody listened to me, did they? But this is where we get onto the actual meat of the episode and what they're trying to do. Their mission for this episode was that we can't forget how Leota found the little business card for the bottling company. So they figure out that this could be one of the main manufacturing places for all of the goo they're developing. And obviously, if they can maybe learn a little bit more about that in this field trip this episode, it could be a way or a key to stopping the butterflies. And again, don't forget that this is still led by Clemson. And some of you who have theories could be saying like, yeah, but he could just be going along with this. I, I kind of disagree. Like, he's still coordinating missions to find out more and stop the butterflies whilst being a butterfly himself. So I'm still like in my own head about like, what is his agenda? He is a literal butterfly, but why is he wanting to stop his own invasion on Earth? And some of you in the comments of last week's video were saying maybe there's like a, you know, civil war between the butterflies. He is actually against his own species or whatever, but that is still yet to be seen. But certainly interesting, and I think this still comes into the very ending scene we got between him and Leota. I don't think it is how it necessarily appears, and I can't wait to get to that. Meanwhile, with Peacemaker's dad, he is talking to the detectives, and he's even saying, hey, take my fingerprints, you'll see that they don't match. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. As usual, the detective and Peacemaker's dad are exchanging race jokes because they're always trying to one-up each other with the various names that they can chuck at each other. We even get to see the witnesses again, Amber, who has already been with Peacemaker. We can't forget about that. She's still saying, oh, I don't think it looks like him. And this obviously only reaffirms to the detectives that, well, we, it looks like the White Dragon may be innocent and this puts them down an even further hole because even though they were right and the prints don't match it turns out later on Clemson got a guy from Waller and even said Waller said you needed my help and that he would take care of it and as a result that guy has taken over as that police captain and then he was basically intimidating the detective saying the lab confirmed they were different results and he was really just trying to get her off the case and the, the interesting thing that I take out of this is why does Clemson want to keep the White Dragon in jail because initially he was really annoyed at John for framing Peacemaker's father. Like that's the last thing they want to happen is to piss Peacemaker off because he's helping them. He is the killer they need to help stop this butterfly situation. So if anything, getting Peacemaker's dad out should maybe alleviate any tension there. But he is actively working to keep White Dragon in jail. And um, I'm only wondering if Clemson is doing that, getting this guy to make sure that this detective doesn't obviously prove the innocence of Peacemaker's father. I'm guessing it's because Clemson is worried that if Peacemaker's father goes free, that he might put a little bit of a stick in this operation, whether that's through distracting Peacemaker. Maybe he's going to go after Peacemaker because as Peacemaker's father said, he thought that vigilante was sent in by Peacemaker to kill him. So he doesn't want the white dragon to be suited up to go after Peacemaker. So like, obviously, 
Yeah, I'm guessing Clemson is just trying to keep him in jail so he doesn't interfere with the operation. But anyway, she went to her uncle, I believe it was, who happens to be a judge, to um, still pursue this case. So I think that she could end up dead. I know that's a bit predictable, but Locke looks like the kind of guy who is hired to just really stop something at, by any means necessary. So if that means silencing her so the white dragon doesn't go free because that's what she's trying to prove, then he will do that. This next moment, I love how it kind of contrasts the end of the episode. Peacemaker was trying to jam out some music and Harcourt is just really basically rolling her eyes, but in how that contrasts with the end of the episode where she can't help but almost vibe with it and start to enjoy herself and the team that she's operating in. I think we also get a slight explanation around this time, even though it seemed kind of obvious from the explanations we've heard about the butterflies in general, that the reason why they appear to be the only team dealing with this alien invasion is because every single time someone tries to officially deal with the butterfly situation, someone higher up in the government shuts them down. So as a result, this task force doesn't exist and it's being funded by Waller through her borrowing money out of other secret, you know, uh, government things like this. And uh, yeah, basically, it is just these guys dealing with this massive, I guess you could say, extinction level threat. Because if the butterflies really did take over, which it seems that they have planet wide... Uh, that, that, that could be the end of it for us humans, you know, and it's just crazy to me, crazy that nobody else is involved in this. Surely somebody should tell the Justice League or something like that, but oh yeah, I guess that's kind of up in the air with those characters, if you know what I mean. When they arrive at the bottling factory, absolute fantastic stuff. They arrive in the plumbing van as their cover, if you will. They split up into a couple of different teams. Leota is with Peacemaker, Vigilante is with Harcourt. And the helmet that Peacemaker has this time allows him to have x-ray vision so he can basically see the butterfly straight up. I love how Leota just goes in there, just wanting him to be a bit chill, but he instantly just starts shooting as if he is completely ruthless, psychopathic style, but really, it's not that. He's just going in there knowing that they're butterflies, but the way it comes across is just so blunt that it's just like, damn, this is an outright murderous psychopath. But really, I guess you could just say he's being thorough. I, I absolutely loved how Leota just... <laughs> shot the bodies after they were already dead, like to try and just get in on the action. Then we have Harcourt and Vigilante find a little goo bottle, so we just confirmed what they somewhat already suspected about the place. And this next bit I felt like was a bit of an homage to just zombies, because when Vigilante and Harcourt got spotted by that butterfly, they all just started going crazy, like zombies, like World War Z style. And around about this time, we got teased to Peacemaker and Leota that your friends are with our guardian angel Charlie. They won't last long. And I was thinking... Okay, what what does that mean? Like, so they're 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 shut in that room with all the butterfly computers, if you will, with their operations, you know, just being kept in that separate room. But it was guarded by none other than a freaking gorilla. I was thinking, by the way, of mentioning that in my other episode breakdowns, because some people were saying, what's all this gorilla missing gorilla stuff in the news about? And I remember paying attention to it to seeing if it was any kind of larger universe world building stuff James Gunn put in there about Gorilla Grodd or something like that. But when I was reading the news, it just didn't say anything other than missing gorilla or something like that. So I was like, you know what? It does seem a little bit too deliberate to me, but I'm going to let it slide because I don't know what to say about it. But here we are. Of course it came back because of the heavy emphasis on the gorilla in previous episodes because there's a butterfly in there and and that's absolutely hilarious i love in a way in how butterflies can not only control humans but anything i can't get over how funny this was it's just I, it's just like it's one thing attacking a gorilla but the way they go about filming the scene whether that's the gorilla just jump kicking Peacemaker to like Peacemaker jumping on him and trying to punch the gorilla in the head to Vigilante trying to do various things to Leo to just getting completely taken out like a football tackle. Um, it, it was really something hilarious. And then of course, John does the little thing that Vigilante wanted to do and that is chainsawing the gorilla. And I, I know there's going to be some people who probably just get really pissed off with seeing a gorilla getting torn apart here. Because a part of me, I don't know about you guys, did you kind of feel bad? I was like, Oh, that poor gorilla at the end of the day. Like, he's been taken over by a butterfly and he's getting freaking chainsawed. But I don't know, there was something about the whole die, humans. And then John coming in to do that. And it's kind of, once again, after the judo master thing he encountered, he probably feels like even more of a badass after this. And and it also opened up uh, a little bit of respect for, from Peacemaker to John, somewhat allowing a bit of a bygones be bygones situation with him putting his dad in prison, if you will. And this also just threw that ordeal. Literally, the 11th Street Kids team, if you will, dealing with a literal 
butterfly possessed gorilla allowed them to grow that look much a little bit closer and um yeah this is just again i feel like this right here kind of personifies the the great cocktail that uh, james gunn often manages to achieve with cluster fucky kind of messes just like this and ah oh, fantastic again this is when we got that moment when they're all just kind of celebrating with each other in the in the van on the way back harcourt's even joining in vigilante just doing his awkward almost robotic kind of dancing which really yeah i just i just loved all of this i mean they even have a group chat now where harcourt was sending that photo that she took of them earlier in the plumbing van as a result of this they get a night off and we go back into the territory of what we briefly spoke about earlier with leota having a beer at peacemakers i love i absolutely love the kite man reference by the way because we actually get and I, it was quite blurry but I managed to work a little bit of the text out and I think it's really adorable in a way how Peacemaker this kind of shows you even more that he believes he is doing the right thing no matter how badly portrayed he has been well portrayed as a result of his own dickish actions, at least you know that he is a product of somebody else's making in that sense. Do you know what I mean when I talk about that? I believe that he believes he's doing this as a hero. It's just, it sometimes comes off a bit weird, but with literal things like this, like a framed newspaper clip, he believes that he is a hero because it even says, new hero peacemaker apprehends Kite Man. Kite Man's arsenal of high-tech gliders and kite technologies allow him to navigate the skies with extreme precision. I am grateful to Peacemaker for his noble effort efforts in ending Kite Man's reign of terror. And uh, yeah, I, I just really love that. James Gunn has made, I guess, Kite Man canon now in the DCEU. That is certainly a fight I would have loved to have seen play out in live action. You can imagine Peacemaker just kind of gliding with Kite Man over the skyline of uh, some city and he's just punching him in the head. It, it, it would have just been a hilarious sequence that I can imagine in my head already. Now again, with Leota planting the diary, around about this time that is when, as I mentioned earlier, we have the detective getting a search warrant from her uncle or at least asking for one where she says ever heard of a guy called peacemaker so is she getting a warrant for peacemaker's place or peacemaker's father's because if she gets the warrant for peacemaker's place then that could very well mean that she's going to find the diary and that is exactly what amanda waller wants because think about it she knows that even though she's being intimidated and thrown off the direction of how it isn't white dragon and actually how he should be going free she knows that the fingerprints are not really peacemakers so he should be the one in jail so what's she gonna find if she gets the warrant for his place well i'm guessing that will be the diary but what is that means to an end there from all i don't know is it gonna be like a diary about all the things that white dragon did to Peacemaker when he was younger. Maybe that will be it. Maybe Waller is trying to put away White Dragon in a legitimate way. I, I know that sounds like weird for Waller. Why does she care about that? But you have to assume that this diary is real. Maybe it was apprehended from Peacemaker a long time ago because he has been in jail for years. Makes sense as to why Waller could have that. And as a result, when you flick through the pages, you're going to read of these atrocities that Peacemaker's father has put upon Peacemaker when he was a kid and his brother, which is criminal, obviously. So maybe it's along that route. I just wanted to leave that theory with you guys. Anyway, though, we have Leota going back to the office where Clemson's just chilling and she decides to put on Peacemaker's helmet with the x-ray vision. And you, we all knew where this was going. As soon as she saw <laughs> Clemson, he was just going and went after her. But I don't think he was trying to kill her. What he was trying to do is just trying to explain to her before she could get away. So he was trying to aggressively, I guess, go after her to get her back in there to be like, look, I know, I know what this looks like, but it's not what you think. I am a butterfly, but believe it or not, I'm trying to stop my own people. We don't know why. That is one of the biggest questions I'm posing to you down in the comments. What do you think that is? Again, let me know if you have another takeaway from this scene, but I do not think that Clemson was trying to kill her. I think he just wants to explain, but I can't wait to find out in the next episode a little bit more clarity because you have to assume he's going to have a conversation with her. I'm very confident she's not going to die, so it probably will be an exchange of words and explanation. But that ends my review for this episode, guys. Absolutely loved it. I think all of the episodes are blending into one at the minute but I, I find them all hilarious but this one was particularly hilarious had a lot of feel good moments in it with the team growing together a bit of character development there on several fronts a little bit more sneakiness going on in other plots with Waller and what the end goal is there what Clemson is still doing in all of this there's a lot of you know trickling trails going on and I can't wait to see where it all leads plus all of that wrapped into a ball of explosive clusterfucky comedy 
you have a double thumbs up from me. So anyway, guys, leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't subscribed already for more updates just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you 11th Street kids, I suppose, in the next video. Goodbye.